Hello YouTube, in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to rig a character using the new version of Duick. I released the tutorial many years ago now of how to do this but the software has changed majorly since and I've had several comments asking for an updated tutorial on Duick. So I'm going to be showing you how to rig this bug character I'm working on for a personal film. Let's jump straight into After Effects and get started. Okay, so here in After Effects I've got the, the file opened up. If you're familiar with any of my tutorials you'll know that I usually use joints, these little circles here on the character for where we rotate the artwork. So we're going to just quickly use Explode Shape Layers. If we click this Convert Vector to Shape button, that will give us all the individual circles as layers and then we'll explode it. giving us all these little circles as individuals. So now we're going to delete the groups layer and we're going to just start with this, this front arm first. So we're going to press Command R to get our rulers open and we're just going to select the first circle here and drop guides into the anchor point. So you want to zoom right in and just drop down some guides into the center of the horizontal and vertical alignment. And we're just going to do this for all three of these green circles. Like so. And that's that done. So then we're going to select all the layers containing the artwork for the front arm and I'm just going to make these green so they match the circles and then we're going to go to Duick. I'm just going to rearrange my workspace slightly. So this is the new the new panel for Duick. If you don't have it open you have to go to Window once you've installed it and it's Duick Basil. So this has all these buttons here which are the different tabs for all the different features. It's quite a complicated tool, I don't understand how all of this works yet. But I'm going to be showing you the basics. So there is this humanoid structure where if you click it, Duric will work away building loads of layers and linking up loads of expressions to build a, a skeleton. Which, if we just let that process, I will show you. Well, that's taking some time. Okay, as we can see here, we've got this kind of structural bone rig for a sort of rough human shape so you can see we've got two legs with all the different bones and then we've got this spine layer and then two arms and then this is kind of your neck and head so this is kind of how the new Duick works you parent your artwork to these bones as opposed to pinning your bones like before <coughs> your artwork sorry not your bones and it creates all of these these layers which to be honest I find really quite intimidating so I use it in a slightly different way which I'm going to show you now so if we just press command Z we're just going to get rid of that and what we're going to actually do is just come into the structures panel and we're just going to build an arm so I like to do it one one limb at a time so it's easier to see because now we can see we've got an arm, a forearm, a hand and an arm tip so what we're going to do is start with the arm and work our way up the, the layers. So we're just going to grab this anchor point and match it up with our circle, like so. And we're going to select the forearm. And we're going to do the same. The hand. And finally, the tip is kind of where the end of the hand finishes. So. I'm just going to eyeball that roughly to that. So now we have this all set up. As you can see with Duric as well, this is already linked. So this is linked to the arm, the hand is linked to the forearm, and the tip is linked to the hand. 
So we need to match our artwork to the structure. So we're going to start with the arm. So if we find our green layers, so the arm needs to be linked to the S arm, which I believe stands for structure. Forearm to the forearm and the hand to the hand. And this is why I like to do it one at a time because when you build that humanoid structure, it gives you all the layers in one go and it makes it really hard to figure out which layer you need to pair it to which structure position. So I find this is easier. So once you've done the parenting, it's good to just do a little test. So if you just rotate this layer, and now your artwork should be attached to this kind of bone structure, which it is. And we'll just quickly test the forearm. You can see that's bending nicely. And finally, we'll do the hand, like so. Sweet. So next we want to select all these blue layers it's created for us and we're going to go out of the structure tab and into the links and constraints tab and we're just going to click auto rig and IK. This will do some loading and it's basically going to create a control layer with this hand and then it's applied loads of expressions to the structures layers which means when we move this hand layer we get some clever IK features going on, which is exactly what we want. What I like to do now is just label this arm F for front. I'm going to select all these structure bone layers and I'm just going to hide them. And then going to toggle with a shy and lock them. Oh, that's not lock, that's hide. Lock them. And then if we click shy layers, it just makes it cleaner, we've got this one controller for all these parts and I'm just going to turn the opacity of the controller down to 20 because it's very very bright and that just makes it a bit more easy to see what's going on and we'll just quickly test that the rotation works for the hand and everything seems to be in order so that's the first arm done and then I'm going to go to view, clear guides I'm just going to select these circles and delete them because we've done that one. I'm just going to select our artwork layers. I'm going to lock these and shy these too. Right, now we will move on to the front leg. So these layers need to be yellow like the circles. So I'm just going to select all these layers and make them yellow. And what's also quite nice is sometimes to solo them. So we're just going to find all these circle layers and select all these and solo it so we can see what we're doing even easier. So again, we're going to come in, drop in our guides. By the way, with the, the layer colors, I've built a system for myself where I use colors to represent certain limbs. So my right arm would always be red. My left arm is green. And then I use green for if it's a, f this is like a profile version of a character. So I'd use green for the front and red for the rear. So I always use these for my arm, arm limbs. And for the legs, I do yellow and blue. And any torso layers will be orange. And any head, I use the fuchsia color. I find if you stick to the same process over and over again, it's a really good way to instantly see what the colors are and you'll know exactly what these layers are supposed to be, which is just a nice little, little prompt which makes life a lot easier once you learn your own process. You could use any colors you want, just make it consistent essentially. That's a little tip for you there. Okay, so we're just gonna go back to the structures panel and we're just gonna click leg. And then this will create the bone structure we need for a leg. So we're gonna start with the fire again and work our way up. in place and then we're going to put the care on 
the foot goes here. And if I need the toe up here, oh, I've moved my ruler, let's not do that. If you want to not move your rulers, if you go to view, you can go lock guides, which means you can, can't can click on them and move them anymore, which is really handy. If I need the tiptoe, similar to the hands, you just want to position it roughly at the end of the layer, like so. And then this heel is where the heel rotates from. So I'm just gonna match this up with the foot layer. I believe it's the foot. Yeah, so it'll rotate perfectly from that circle. Like so. So then we're gonna find our yellow layers and we're gonna link phi to the structure for phi. Calf to the structure for the calf foot to the structure for the foot and finally toe to the toes. Once so we have that set up we're going to select all these layers again and we're going to go back to the auto rig in IK and let Jurek do its magic. So again I'm going to select all of these layers I'm going to unsolo them. I'm going to make them invisible and lock them. And then I'm just going to shine them all away. I'm going to select all these solid joints because these are the yellow ones. And I'm just going to delete those because we don't need them anymore. I am going to change this to yellow. And I'm going to name this leg F. That is not how you spell leg. For leg front. And finally, I'm just going to unsolo these layers and lock them and shy them away. And let's just make that 20. So let's test this foot, see if it's working how we want it to. Gonna quickly clear the guides. So then when we move this leg, it's bending nicely. And I will show you quickly the new features of Duet, which are really nice. If you have your position, say we had a guide here, which was the floor level. So we can rotate our foot so it's I keep pressing that wrong button in line with the floor and here if I close this up in the effects control for the the hand the control area it gives you you have all these foot features now so you can slide this which will rotate the toes so if you ever need any toe animation maybe he's just tapping his foot to a beat of a tune or something it's a nice little feature and then we have this tiptoe where it cleverly figures out where the tiptoe layer was using that bone structure and it rotates everything from the tiptoe layer. So this is really nice when you zoom out because you'll see it affects the knee and the thigh position which is great. And the best one is, ah sorry we've got this heel first so you can do the same again with just the heel so a more aggressive heel stomping. And finally, this foot roll rolls from the planted toe, so the toe never leaves the ground, and the heel brings up, and this will lift the knee. This is very good if this layer was back here, and it's the end of a walk cycle, and the foot begins to be lifted off the ground before the leg comes forward and stumps back down which is very nice. I'm just going to quickly undo until I'm back to my starting position, like so. Oh, one thing I will show you as well actually. If you drag a layer too far with Duric, you get this kind of broken up stretchy thing. I'm not entirely sure how this works, but if you just select the control layer, open the stretch panel, 
and just turn off auto stretch this way whenever you move the controller the limbs will stay attached which I think is just cleaner I'm going to turn the auto stretch off for the hand layer quickly as well so that's how you rig the legs and the arms there is a spine controller but you need several parts of the spine and the way I've drawn this character I don't have all the spine shapes so I'm going to be ignoring that for now in this video and I'm going to show you how I rig my spines up which is similar but I just prefer this method in general but anyways let's continue we'll go back and show you how to do an arm again so we're going to select all these red circles we're going to solo them and we're going to find the artwork so it's the rear limbs we're going to drop in some more rulers I have to apologize my laptop is not enjoying recording whilst running After Effects so the fans are going a little bit crazy I imagine the recording is going to pick that up so, I'm not happy with that let's just redo that one there we go we have these rulers in place now so we're going to create another arm layer And again, I'm going to start just positioning these layers. Oh, by the way, if your limbs are not snapping to the guides, you need to go to View and click Snap to Guides here. And this will, wherever you put an anchor point, snap to a guide, which is really useful. So there we go, let's snap to that. Finally, the hand snap it up here. And we're going to eyeball the end of the hand like so. Just going to make these layers red. So now you will see we have arm two, forearm two, and hand two. So when you build that humanoid structure, it will give you arm, uh, sorry, arm, forearm, and hand, which, and then arm, forearm, hand, two. So it's confusing when you build the humanoid structure in one go, which one's the left arm and which one's the right arm, which is why I like to do it individually. I think it's quicker as well. So we're going to link the arm to arm two, forearm to arm two, and the hand to hand to. And once we have this, I'm just going to unshy these layers. Going to delete these joints and unshy these structures layers. We're going to IK rig. <coughs> Make this one red. We can call this arm B for back. Turn these layers off, lock them, and solo them. Actually, I'm just going to quickly reposition these so these are. It doesn't really matter, but I just like to know which layers are on top. So, so the arm is above arm F is above arm B and I'm just going to quickly drop this to 20% and let's just test it out it seems to be working fine I'm going to rotate that that's great and again Let's turn off that stretch feature. Just going to do a quick save. We'll call 
this run rig. There we go. Alright, let's do this last leg. So there we go, clear guides. Select the circles and once again drop in the guides. Like so. Great. And then we're going to unsolder these layers and delete those joints. And let's get ourselves another leg structure. Starting with the fire. Let's get position that into our first position. Should have kept this soloed so we can see things a bit more clearly, but I believe we're fine. And again, gonna match the heel up with the foot position, like so. So we're gonna link the toe to toes two, the foot to foot two, the calf to calf two, and the thigh to thigh two. Select these layers and we are going to do our final rig. Again, turn off these layers, lock them, solo them, make this controller blue. And we're going to call it leg B. Actually, I'm going to move all of these underneath just for my sanity I'm going to be using this character in a personal film later this is why I'm doing it so, so nicely right let's just double check this is working it seems fine get some weird stuff going on with the toe there Quickly, see what's going on. I think it's just because I've overlapped the limb. Yeah, Jewett goes a bit crazy sometimes when the limbs force themselves on top of each other like that. You see how the thigh and the calf are intercepting. But in general, this seems fine. We've got the rotation working. And toes and everything are bending, which seems good. Let's check that heel position. That seems nice. Okay, I'm getting something weird going on with this foot roll, but I think if I just set this to zero and set this to minus one that looks like it will correct it I usually build my characters perfectly straight this one I've gone for straight into a pose with a character in a run cycle which maybe isn't a good idea 
Let's bear that in mind when you're rigging your characters, but setting that to minus one seems to fix that issue. That's rolling how it should. Which means that foot might not mess up. Nope, still messing up. I don't think that's going to be a problem though. The leg's only ever going to move like this. Cool. Let's just unshy these layers. We're going to lock these layers and shy them. I'm just going to position this back up here. View clear guides. Right. So that's all the jerk parts done. Now I'm just going to rig up my spine and head. I'm not actually going to rig the face. I might do that in a follow up separate video and maybe use joystick and sliders. However, I'm not entirely sure what my plan is for this character's head yet. Maybe I won't do that. So there may be a joystick and sliders video coming up next but for now I'm just gonna grab all of the head layers just gonna make them fuchsia and I'm going to unselect the head and parent everything to the head so when we move this head everything's attached if I don't make that joysticks and sliders tutorial I will try to build it with another character and upload a video for you. Right, so we're going to drop in the guides for these torso and spine positions. This one. So these are my rotation points I need for this character. And finally this one is just for the tail, which I'm gonna just use to give the tail a little bit more secondary animation. Ooh, helps if you don't right click. So then we're gonna select all these spine layers and I'm just going to make them orange so this tail top there I'm going to just press Y grab this anchor point and snap it to here so I can now open the not sure why that artwork moved all of a sudden it doesn't usually do that so I can rotate this layer and just get a little bit of bounce to this kind of shell shell on his tail. And then the tail bottom, which is this section, I'm going to add to this circle here. And I'm going to pair the top tail to here. So when this rotates, it rotates with it, and then I can lift this section up if I need to. Next we've got this hip layer, which I'm then going to parent the tail to. This hip detail is just one stripe here, so I'm going to parent that to the hips, so wherever the hips go, this all remains attached nicely and then I've got this lower spine layer which I'm also going to link to the same pivot point and attach it to the hips so when I rotate the spine my After Effects is playing up Where is that anchor point gone? This recording software is messing up After Effects a little bit. So yeah, when I rotate this spine, 
I get some nice shape movement here and it's still attached to the hips so if I move the hips sorry I have not parented it so when the hips move the spine is attached and then I have the shoulders which I'm going to match up with this circle and link this to the lower spine and finally we have this neck which links to the shoulders and the last thing we need to do is select the head and link it here which then links to the neck I'm just going to select all of these head layers lock them and show them just so we can see what's going on delete the remaining joints and we're going to clear our guides so now if I this hip detail I don't need actually as well let's get rid of that so the hips is how I drive my up and down movements in any walk cycle or run cycle or whatever so I will move this up and down which allows me to move the whole body I can then bend this tail up as the lower spine bends up as well so we can get some nice nice motion in the lower spine and then I've got another controller for here so I can get some really curved curved spinal shapes I can accentuate that even further with the neck so if he's really sprinting his head might be hanging really far back I, need, I can move the head as well it's very extreme but it gives this, this rig a lot of flexibility which is nice so I'm just going to undo all of that actually the quickest way select all these layers and just hit zero to make sure they're all on zero right so now we're going to untry our layers and what we need to do is find our shoulders for the Durek limbs so if we find the arm front controller we need to select this arm I'm going to just hit tilde quickly to maximize this we're going to find the arm for the the rear as well where are we ah, it's right here I am being blind so select both of these arm layers and I'm just going to find the shoulder layer which is 48 a pair of those and I need to do the same for the thighs these two and we're going to parent these to our hips layer and we're just going to lock those back up show them so now if I move the hips our limbs are all attached and if I rotate the shoulders the the arms are also attached to that part of the rig so that is how I rig characters using Jewick I hope that was useful I'm gonna possibly follow this video up with uh, a joysticks and sliders rig for the heads and I will use the plugin I built recently called Bendy Nose for these antennas um, and then but that also depends on I'm planning this character for a run cycle for a, a little short film I'm working on I might not need a full joystick rig so I might not do that but I might show you a video of how to rig up these antennas and do some blinks and stuff with some nice controllers and stuff to make things a bit easier so there will be at least a video to follow on how to rig ahead might not be with joysticks and sliders though 
and finally I will be releasing a video of the actual run cycle so you can get some nice animation going on as well um, but yeah I think that's it for today I'm gonna end the video there and keep stay tuned because I might be releasing some new videos soon with this same character so I'll see you on the next one